Hello YouTube friends, Cityside75 here and today I wanted to give you a closer look at my Logitech G25 steering wheel setup. Um, as a lifelong car enthusiast and a lifelong video game enthusiast, this setup right here represents the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's realistic, uh, it's a lot of fun, and with my recently acquired PlayStation 3 and Gran Turismo 5, uh, it is really quite an experience. Uh, as you can see here, um, I've got it set up in front of my TV, uh, it's a 47 inch TV, and I've got the uh, steering wheel here mounted on this small table. I picked this up not too long ago. As soon as I saw this table, I just knew it would be perfect for this type of an application. And as it worked out, we also needed a small desk for my son's room. So during the week, this thing lives the life of a fifth grader's desk. But then on Friday nights, it gets brought down to the game room and it's time to drive. So that's where we are now. And I've put together a little time lapse that just shows you um, how quick I can go from having my room uh, set up normally to getting uh, the cockpit ready uh, for driving action. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, and just to give you a little bit more of a look at this G25 here, uh, some of the awesome features about this thing are the metal steering wheel. Um, you know, most of these things are plastic, but this thing is actually made of metal, and that's real leather wrapped. I mean, this thing really does feel a lot like the wheel in my uh, Subaru. Uh, just a little bit smaller, but really not much smaller. Um, it's got paddle shifters back here, which I actually have deactivated because it's got, as you can see, a full six-speed shifter here. Um, you got buttons on top that do your main, you know, PlayStation functions and things like that. Um, and then down here, you probably won't be able to see these very well, but you got your pedals down there. And you know, it looks like you got a, a wire, a mass of cords, but you know, they don't inter interfere at all. I've got them all routed around uh, the table here. So you got a full clutch plus your uh, gas and brake. Those are all weighted separately, so um, you know they feel very realistic when you're uh, working the pedals. Um, and yeah, this thing has two force feedback motors inside of it, uh, so it gives you almost like a stereo effect, I guess you could say. It, it, you can feel, you know, if you dip your left wheel off, you can feel the the pull to the left, and, and, and it's it's it gives it just an extra oomph in the the realism department so and yeah I just got my office chair pulled up here and then you can see that we and we're running 5.1 surround sound um, I got it quiet right now but certainly when we're playing uh, we crank it up and and actually I should say that's 5.2 surround sound since I just recently added another subwoofer to my existing one over here so all right so we're gonna go ahead and take take a look at some uh, gameplay video now Okay, so we're going to do an arcade race here. 
I'm going to play on beginner level uh, B, or I'm sorry, intermediate level B. And I'm going to play on the world famous, I'm going to take a drive on the world famous Nürburgring in Germany. This is a 13 mile challenging and fun course. Uh, it's got some really tight, difficult sections and then a fantastic uh, about mile and a half straight away at the end where you get to really push your car. All right, so for car, I'm gonna take a little bit improved version of what I've got. I don't have an STI and mine's not a 10, but I've got an O2. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this. And we'll do, we'll do white. And I wanna show you real quick my settings here for this wheel. Okay, so first of all, obviously manual transmission. Um, I keep the driving line off unless I'm doing like a license race. Uh, I generally put the traction control at about two because you know cars do have traction control so I don't think you know you have to completely turn it off but I keep it so it's fairly non-intrusive. Uh, this active steering I put on mild this just prevents you from oversteering too much. I find when this is off that I oversteer a little bit more in this than I think I would in real life. Um, I mean I've got a couple of performance cars and uh, you know, I've driven them hard at times and never really come close. Well, I did oversteer, I did oversteer and spin my car one time, but uh, that was it. Um, okay, so then other than that, let's see. I've got the ASM off. Uh, I've got the ABS on one. Again, fairly un unintrusive, but realistic. We do have it now in most cars. Um, and yeah, so that's that. All right, here we go. Uh, the other settings in the game I didn't show you. I've basically got all of the assists uh, that the computer provides when you're using a controller turned off. Um, it's a, about as realistic as, as it can be in terms of the settings. You know, I've got it on, I guess, professional level or whatever uh, it would be referred to as. Yeah, because to me, the only way to play this game, if you've got this kind of a setup, is with the settings unrealistic and you know it takes a little getting used to but once you do it is exhilarating and that's the main reason why I wanted to show this because I've been playing driving games you know since the beginning and I've always dreamt of the day when you would have something that felt real and you know if number of years back, I'll never forget when uh, Daytona came out in the arcades, and certainly Daytona is not a simulation, but man, it had one of the most amazing force feedback joysticks, or joysticks, <laughs> steering wheels, um, and it just drew you into the experience. I, I thought that thing was amazing. Uh, and incidentally, this G25 is uh, actually compatible with the, I'm not sure if the name of the emulator is Supermodel, uh, that might be the Model 3 emulator, but anyway, there's an, a Model 2 emulator for the PC that uh, it, it works pretty well, and it plays Daytona just about perfectly, and it actually simulates the, it allows you to use a wheel like this and simulates the force feedback very accurately. Now, if you don't know how to drive manual, you're not going to be able to do uh, this very well because you know the only part that it can't realistically simulate is when you miss a shift and you grind the gears. Uh, maybe someday. But so if you miss a shift now, it just stays in neutral, and you've got to ungate the shifter, re-depress the clutch, and basically re-complete the entire shift in order to get it to work, otherwise it'll just stay in neutral. Oh yeah, we're in third place, and we're two minutes in, not bad at all. Um, where was I? What was I just saying? Let's see here. Uh, I think I 
mentioned earlier that I just recently picked up this PS3 uh, last, two weeks ago and uh, Gran Turismo 5 as well. Um, I had played Gran Turismo 4 sporadically, uh, you know, on and off for years. And when I first got this wheel, I hooked it up to Gran Turismo 4. And that was, it was a good experience. It's just that 4 doesn't support the, uh, the 6 speed. Um, this actually can switch over to a uh, mode where it just goes up and down. And that's to emulate the older, like the Driving Force GT and the Driving Force Pro. Let's see there, I missed a shift. Come on, guys. And I drove a couple practice laps just to make sure I didn't embarrass myself too bad when I started this video. And I was doing worse than those by far. I think that I actually drive better when I'm distracted. So, yeah, we're making a move for first right now pretty early. Now we'll just see if we can hold them off. So the first time I set this up, I actually put a fan down on the floor uh, in front of the setup here, just to give you a little feeling of the wind running through your hair. And uh, when I'm playing it without videoing, I usually turn the lights uh, either off or down real low, just so you're really drawn into the experience. And the force feedback quality on this wheel uh, is is just great. Um, I actually keep the force settings at mild because you know this setup isn't entirely stable although the movement that it does have doesn't feel completely unrealistic because you know when you're driving a car uh, you're not attached to that thing. I mean you're attached to it obviously but only loosely and uh, things move around you know you in relation to the steering wheel and everything else when you're driving too so it's very workable. Alright, missed a shift there. Let's concentrate. We don't want these guys to catch back up to us here. Let's make a good turn. A little soft, but coming out strong. Oh yeah, now they're back. Um, oh, I know what I was talking about as well was... Uh, Having gotten this PS3 and playing Gran Turismo 5 for the first time, uh, I have to say I'm not disappointed. Uh, graphics are fantastic, um, and it just it feels wonderful, like every Gran Turismo game does. Uh, I've been going back and playing the old Gran Turismos as well. Um, on the PS1, I have a what brand it is, but it's one of the earlier joystick controllers that came out for the PS2. No force feedback or anything like that. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's decent. It works well enough with Gran Turismo 1. So I'm thinking about putting up a video of playing each version of Gran Turismo because this thing, like I said before, it's backwards compatible. Um, it plays great on the PC as well. I play uh, Test Drive Unlimited on the PC and use this wheel or the other one for that and that is a that's a really good time too you know i could see how that game might not be that exciting i, I don't even play online by the way i just i just enjoy driving around the city and i can see how that game might not be the most exciting if you're using a controller but man when you're using this thing it just it really feels like you're cruising around uh one thing that i judge a game in, in terms of its realism as a driving game, uh, one of the measures I have, and Test Drive Unlimited was one of the first ones where I felt this so clearly, and that is that it has to feel realistic when you're driving slow as well as fast. Um, because, you know, a lot of driving games, if you ever try to drive the speed limit in them, it just doesn't feel right. You know, it doesn't feel, either it feels like you're completely crawling or you can't get the, you know, the... Um, the car to shift out of like second gear so the engine's just roaring waiting for you to step on the gas um, but that test drive unlimited and you know to a certain extent this as well um, it plays 
very realistically when you are driving at the speed limit. And I, I only say this to a lesser extent because, you know, there's no traffic lights or anything like that to obey. You're just kind of driving slowly around the race course, but it still feels good. Alright, they're back there gaining on me again here. And we are probably about three quarters of the way done with this course. Can't lose them completely here. The pedals feel great on this thing too. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the, the straightaway. Let's see what we can push in this Subaru. 137, 138, 40. All right, and we still got another gear. Not bad, 142, 145, where we hit 150, no, we got a turn coming up here, we got to slow it down. Nice, oh, slow down, Just the shift. That's where the all-wheel drive helps. Oh, that's it. Oh, I didn't even notice. We completed the lap. All right. Great. I won. I did better now than I did in uh, practice. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing my driving setup. Uh, as always, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, comments, uh, want to share uh, your own driving setup or any other you know, crazy gaming setup, I've got a few others, um, please feel free to do so. And again, thanks for watching.